Back in December, on the first signing day, there was no Illini head coach, as Lovey Smith had just let go three days before. Since that time, the orange and blue welcomed home a native son, Brett Bielema, to take over the program. Bielema recently spent time in the NFL after a stint with Arkansas, but first made his name nationally with remarkable success as the head coach at Wisconsin. Most of this 2021 class, he didn't get a chance to initially recruit, but here's a look at some of the commits that are heading towards Champaign. The only top 500 player ranked nationally here is Brody Wisecarver. And Brett knows how much improvement this program needs to do in the recruiting world specifically, but why take my word for it? Let's go out to Champaign right now and hear from the man himself. He is the new head man at Illinois. He's Brett Bielema, good enough to join us now. Brett, in the few weeks you've been on the job now, what have you learned is going to be the biggest challenge in getting good recruits to come to your program? Well, Mike, I think it's a challenge that all of us face, right? you got to be able to get in on the ones that you want, uh, be able to pursue them the way that you want, and be able to convince them that this is what they want, right? So um, that's going to be the niche, right? we got to start building it, obviously, here in the state of Illinois, you know, put up a barrier around us. And obviously, I'm aware of other schools in our state, but this has got to be a state that Illinois kids want to come to, um, it's ones that they want to come to to win a Big Ten championship. And it starts there, and we'll branch out from everywhere else. And that was one of the things you and I talked about when you were on the On the Bench podcast with me about the conversations you had those first couple of weeks with the state of Illinois high school coaches. You said the responses to them were almost completely 100% warm and receptive to you. But when they did talk to you about problems in the past, what were the concerns they had about sending kids to Illinois? You know, really didn't get into it. You know, one of the opening statements I'd make every time, Mike, just up front being real, like I can't control anything of the past. All I can do is worry about today. And uh, we kind of operated under that and, and had a lot of positive responses. I mean, if a kid doesn't want to hear, doesn't want to listen, then obviously that's their choice. But I haven't had anybody hang up on me yet. I, I know that. <laughs> so when you do sell the program to high schoolers, what, what's the pitch you're given right now? You know, it's been it's been a, a, an easy sell, right? So I'm from the state of Illinois. I was born at Illini Hospital in Silvis, Illinois. Know the lay of this land. I've been in this conference as a player, an assistant coach, a coordinator and a head coach um, at a previous plot. So it's been a really easy thing for me to tell them, listen, come here, be a part of the plan, uh, get yourself better every day, and, and you'll be rewarded for a lifetime. And, you know, to now have on staff two coaches, uh, Aaron Henry, Terrence Jamison, Terrence from the city of Chicago, who played for me uh, in this conference, and to have two former players represented on my staff of here's living, breathing proof of what someone can become. Uh, you know, both two different stories. Terrence really didn't get a chance to play because of injury. Aaron had a a well doc, you know, decorated uh, a career and got a chance in the NFL. So, two guys, two different stories, but same different results. There was a young transfer up in Madison a few years ago named Russell Wilson, and uh, you had decent success with him. So, you know how to make something like this work. How important do you think transfers will be in your first year or two of trying to rebuild this program? You know, Mike, it's it's something that we really embraced. Um, you know, there were 14 kids committed here before I ever came on campus, before I was ever named. So uh, I knew coming in, there would be a limited pool of players that were available for this signing day today. We got two great ones in Josh McCray and, and uh, Dwayne Johnson, but we've been able to add quite a few kids to the to grad transfer as well as a regular transfer portal. And uh, it's something I knew and identified early. I, I think they can give us immediate help at some positions. Maybe we're a little thin because of either graduation or transition. And uh, I, I do tell guys, listen, uh, especially – that first uh, grad transfer I had was a guy by the name of Russell Wilson and still working for him, you know, <laughs> plays in the NFL and got to marry Sierra. So he's been living a life that's been pretty good. But I would tell our guys, you know, the, the grad transfer world is, you know, not only one year grad transfer, two year, three year grad transfers. And I want them to not only just bring a good football player, I want to bring a great person. And if they come from pedigree, like that are in the college football playoffs, national championship games, whatever it is, let's get players here that know how to win. So just to be clear, you're saying as a guarantee to every grad transfer, if you come play for Bielema, you will be an NFL star and you will marry Sierra. Is that, that, that's a guarantee you're giving, right? No, that's a media guy putting words in my mouth. What I did say <laughs> is that they are, will have the same opportunities that Russell Wilson had. And if they go beyond that, that's in their hands. I like the way I said it better. Um, you know, there's something Jerry was bringing up that I want to ask you about because, you know, he thinks the way you do as a head coach. And in this weird world we're living in of COVID, that number of 85 feels not as strict, but it still seems gray, like with transfers coming and people getting an extra year of eligibility. How are you handling roster management for this upcoming year? You know, Mike, it's it really was a focus, not only uh, just to take this Illinois job, I kind of been thinking about uh, obviously this over a period of time and 
was researched into the rules of what we're going through right now in COVID. And because everybody got this bonus year, I really wanted to look at, you know, A, the group of seniors that could be just potentially leaving that could bring back. Not only could they have the opportunity to go to the NFL, quit football, but also go to other teams. So I recruited those guys the hardest, the fastest, and got the majority of them back. And then really, uh, you know, as this thing has unfolded, the NCAA has shown us they're going to give us some relief in numbers. My guess is that eventually there'll be relief in numbers even in the years ahead. But it, to me, it was a great opportunity to have a whole team of grad transfers. You know, there are guys that are already here, already have apartments, already know the way of living around Champaign, but now they just got to get used to us. So it's a it's a golden opportunity. It's something I really embraced and hopefully make the most of it. Brett, it's always great to talk to you. We appreciate your time. And, and finally, I'll allow you the opportunity to end the interview with three letters, any three letters you'd like in particular. Appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for having me on. ILL. <laughs> there he is, Brent Bielema, the head coach of the Illini. As you look at a state-by-state -state breakdown of where the current crop of Illini players are going to be. And, Alan, this is a, a tough spot for a new head coach because, like you know, he said he was going to try to keep those guys he got, but they weren't guys that he initially recruited, which means a lot of emphasis of where he's going to take the program in terms of recruiting is going to come with next year's class. First of all, great job slipping in your podcast. <laughs> Sell it. Let's, let's brand it. Let's, uh -huh. That's great. Yep. But, yeah, I think Brett really gets it when it comes to recruiting. And he's what he mentioned there, starting at the home state and branching out, they've done that in recruiting. Very soon after he took the job, they re-offered a lot of class of 2022 players that the previous staff had offered and then extended a bunch of new offers inside the state. And they're not just throwing offers out there. They are evaluating these, ki these kids and then putting out those offers. And then from there, we've seen more offers in the Midwest footprint, uh, offers in Ohio, Missouri. Uh, I know this because my phone buzzes every time I get tagged in one of those, and there's been a lot more Illinois action on that, and I think we're going to see that moving forward. Uh, they are, have definitely concentrated more in the traditional Big Ten Midwest footprint so far in 22 recruiting. Yeah, Alan, I think he's done an outstanding job of really hitting the ground running. You heard him talk about really starting to get back and have start those relationships with some of the coaches uh, here in the state of Illinois. And, and some of those relationships were, were damaged. And I think a guy like Coach Bielema can really fix those relationships and make them happen so that these head coaches at the high school level will also feel like they're they're open, they're welcomed at the University of Illinois. So I think those are some of the things that are going to help him. And it's really about him going out and establishing the identity of what he wants this Illinois football team to look like, not only this year, but in the years to come. As he continues to establish that, I think the recruiting side of it is really going to be picking up. And the fact that he's going out and personally offering these players that are coming up now, I think is going to really pay dividends in the, uh, the coming years. You know, Brett used the term, put a fence around the state, right? Those of us that have coached in states that have a lot of talent, that, that, that's pretty common practice. And to your point, Howard, it's important for the relationships. Let's remember, Illinois, after Ohio, it's either Michigan, Illinois, or New Jersey in the Big Ten footprint that produced the most players. And so... He is in the best state in the west part of the conference for talent. And how you recruit this, the, the in-state recruit is so much different than the out-of-state recruit. You're not going to keep everybody, right? But here's what you are going to do to everybody. You are going to make a statement that that prospect, whether he says yes or no, that he, his family, and his high school coach will say, Coach, we might not be coming to Illinois, but you did the best job of anybody recruiting. That's the obligation of a coach that recruits an in-state where if you get most of the good players, you can build a program. There's not many schools in the West Division that can say that. Illinois is the one school that can say that if they keep the best prospects in. And nowadays, with, with all the free agency and the movement, hmm. even when a prospect says, I'm going somewhere else, and Howard, you and I talk about this a lot, when they go somewhere else, you hug them, you wish them the best, because that relationship may come back to benefit you in a year or two if they want to transfer. And Jerry, to your point about how the state of Illinois has kind of been abandoned in the last administration for recruits, this is two straight years. The Illini haven't brought in a top 25 ranked player from the state of Illinois. It's been four straight classes. They haven't brought in a top 10 ranked player from the state of Illinois. It seems pretty clear Brett Bielema wants that to change and change in a hurry. You mentioned how good